Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, you can clearly see there's no intro. The camera's moving around because this is recorded on my phone and I don't have a camera stand for my phone. Um, so, this video is about uh, when I went to the Durango and Silverton. So when I went to the Coombrays and Toltec, I also went to the Durango and Silverton uh, that same week. Uh, but I didn't have as good footage of the Durango and Silverton. I was just recording because I wanted to record it, really. You know, like, who doesn't want to record steam, steam engines, right? Um, anyway, uh, my phone died while we were on our way back to Durango, so there's not going to be any footage. You'll, like, you'll just see it cut off, and that'll be the end of the video. Uh, real sorry about that, but... Also, there's a lot of inconsistencies in the video. I've done my very best to have it as consistent as possible, but sometimes they're double heading and sometimes they're not. Um, they had to double head because this was the longest train they had ever done on their line. It was the, I do believe it was one of the last runs of the season. So that's actually pretty neat that I got to do that. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, here we go. <laughs> so they're putting another engine on, I think. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to get into no, no, you go ahead. Taking the video? Yeah. Oh, you go ahead, then. Oh, you're fine. You're not even in the shot.
copy don't need it. Yeah, look at the silver coach. The silver open car. It's totally cool. This is where they let out all the condensation. Durango was founded by the Denver Rio Grande Railway in 1880. The railroad arrived in Durango on August 5, 1881, and construction on the line to Silverton began in the fall of the same year. By July of 1882, the tracks to Silverton were completed, and the train began hauling both passengers and freight. From the very beginning, the railroad was promoted as a scenic route for passenger service, although the line was constructed primarily to haul mine ore, both gold and silver, from the San Juan Mountains. It is estimated over $300 million in precious metals has been transported over this route. By 1885, the population of Silverton had grown to 1,100 people, and Otto Mares completed the toll road to Ure, and an additional narrow-gauge track out of Silverton was laid down in 1887. In 1893, ten large mines in the Silverton district were forced to close, when silver prices dropped from $1.05 an ounce to $0.63 cents an ounce. Just three years later, the Yankee Girl and Custom Mines played out in Durango. The fire of 1889 virtually destroyed downtown, and the first automobile arrived by train in 1902. By 1906, Mesa Verde was designated a national park, increasing the potential for tourism promotions. Throughout the next 20 years, the railroad faced many challenges, slides, floods, snow, war, and financial insta instability. When the U.S. government entered World War I, it assumed operation of the railroad. Shortly after resuming control of the railroad operations, the Denver Rio Grande Western reorganized due to financial difficulties. Silverton suffered devastating effects from the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918. 10% of the population died in just six weeks. In addition, the Gold King Mine closed, the Sunnyside Mine temporarily ceased operations for almost 10 years, and the Silverton Railroad closed. With, an, with the advent of World War II, the U.S. government requisitioned narrow-gauge equipment to use in Alaska, and the smelter in Durango reopened to process uranium for use in the war. The smelter continued to process uranium instead of silver into the late 1940s due to the Cold War, by 1947, the Silverton branch was in danger of being abandoned. A determined staff stepped in and helped to promote tourism, keeping the line alive. Then Hollywood discovered Durango and the railroad. Over the next 10 years, several movies were filmed in the area, showcasing the train. 
Ticket to Tomahawk, Across the Wild Missouri, Denver and Rio Grande, Viva Zapta, and Around the World in 80 Days. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be going back to Colorado on the, the Croombrays and Toltec um, around August, I do believe. Uh, we're not gonna be going halfway like we did last time. This time we're gonna be going all the way to the end of the line 
and there will be a lot much better footage uh, than the last video I did on the Kubrays and Toltec because this time I'm actually making it for a YouTube video. Um, yeah, I hope you all have a good week and I'll see you in the next one.